hold documents like a fax and have it come right to your address, just like the mail. Today, email can tap into the limitless resources of the internet, not only for correspondence, but to download pictures, sounds, even video, and then send them to a friend instantly. Let me show you how this works. My computer is a Macintosh, and I'm running the email program Eudora. If you're using a PC or some other email software, it should look almost identical. Okay, let's go ahead and send a message. Come over here to the message menu and pull it down to new message. A box will appear called the composition window, your letterhead so to speak. The first thing you'll notice is that the from field is already filled in with the name and email address. That's because my software has already been configured with my personal information. As you can see, on my software, my own email address and name are here. I'll explain how this interesting looking address system works in just a little bit. Okay, I'll send a message and let's see to my friend Vince. His address is Vince D at Minnesota.k12.edu. Now, by hitting the tab key, you advance directly into the subject line. Here you can put a brief reference of what your message is all about. I'll type email demonstration. Again, when I check my mail, you'll see that the subject line of the correspondence, which you just entered in this line, is listed. So always remember to fill in the subject line of your message. This helps both you and your recipient see at a glance what your message is all about. Now, if you tap again, you'll move into the CC line. CC stands for carbon copy, an old typewriter term still in use, meaning that if you want to send a copy of this message to somebody else, you can enter that person's email address here, and it will automatically be sent to that address as well. Tubbing again brings you into the BCC, or blind carbon copy line. Entering an address here would send a secret copy of the message to that address without the original recipient, Vince in this case, knowing that I did it. These CC and BCC lines are mostly used in inner office email applications for, say, a memo. While you might use the carbon copy for a project, you'll rarely have an occasion to use the blind copy. Now, tabbing again brings you directly into the message field, sort of like a blank piece of paper. Notice that we skip right past the attachments line. This is where you can, as part of an email message, attach a file, perhaps a word processing document or even a graphic, sound clip, or a video file. We'll see how attachments work just a little bit later in the video. So here we are in the body of the message. I'll just type Vince. Just a brief note to show everyone how easy email is to use. Please reply as soon as you get this so that I can show everyone how fast email is. I wanted to put this in too. Also, please attach that neat graphic you found online yesterday so that I can show everyone. 
and then I'll put my name at the bottom. There. Now all I have to do is go up here and click on send, and it's on its way to Vince's email box. Depending on your school's setup, the send icon may in fact say Q. Q means that the message is stored in the computer's memory so that many messages can be sent all at once instead of one at a time, as you would with send. Either way, be sure to proofread your message before you send it. Also, be sure to observe a few simple email rules, known as netiquette. First of all, never use all capital letters. It's a lot like shouting. Also, don't use inappropriate language, and never include any personal information, like your home address or phone number. Remember, email can be easily transferred to others. Above all, make sure you input the recipient's email address exactly. An email address leaves absolutely no room for error. It must be input with every dash and period included. Your mail will be returned to you with an error message if you don't get it right. Let's take a look at my address and I'll explain how it works. The first part, that is the letters before the at sign, is my unique user ID. Usually, the user ID is a condensed version of a person's name or a nickname or something. In my case, TMC stands for Tim McLean. The part after the at sign is the name of the internet connected computer that receives and holds my email. This computer is my internet domain, or host, on the internet. Really, this is where I live online. Each domain name has a domain type, which is expressed by the three-letter extension after the period. These extensions help you to know what type of organization maintains the host computer used by the person you're corresponding with. My domain type is .com for commercial. You see, on the internet, each computer has a unique name. My company's internet domain name is Wentworth. Now, where there may be other people on the internet whose user ID is TMC, there is only one TMC whose internet domain computer is called Wentworth. That's what makes each internet address unique. Now, Vince's host computer has an extra extension, .k12. That's because there are a number of computers on the internet that have Minnesota as part of their names. So, to make his host unique, the extra extension .k12 was added. There are also domain extensions for countries to help you identify where your mail is going to or coming from. Here's an example of an email address from France. The last extension, the .fr, is the country domain extension. If there are no country extensions to an address, you can assume that the user is in the United States. Okay, let me go ahead and prove my email to Vince. Mm-hmm, looks good. And we'll click on send, and away it goes. Now, in just a minute, we'll check my mailbox to see if I get a reply from Vince. Assuming, of course, that Vince is at his computer. Even if he's not at his computer, his email will drop into his email box, and he'll get it the next time he goes online. That's because the host computer that receives his email is always online. In fact, there are more than 4 million host computers constantly online. When an individual computer receives an incoming email message, it looks at the user ID attached to the address and then files the message in that user's mailbox. The mail is held in the box until the user logs on and downloads it or retrieves it from the host computer. Now, receiving email is just as easy as sending it. Simply access the internet, start up your email software, then come up here to File, and select Check Mail. First, you'll be asked to enter your password. Don't forget it, and don't share it, unless, of course, you want other people reading your mail. So once you've entered your password, your Dora will log on to your host computer and begin receiving your messages. And when it's done, it will display them in an inbox. Now, if you don't have your own account, then your software has probably been set up with your own email folder. Let's go ahead and take a look at my inbox. First of all, you'll notice the dots running down the left-hand side here. They mean that these messages haven't been read yet. Let's see here. Here's a note from Don. You see, this column actually displays the real name of the sender. And here's some stuff from a mailing list I subscribe to, and what's entered in the subject field appears over here. And here's the date and time that it was actually sent. 
This number is referencing the size of the message, not how many pieces of mail are in this file. Aha, here we go. Vince actually went ahead and replied to our message. We'll just double click on it and that opens the mail. Let's take a quick look at this. At the top of the message, Eudora displays a title bar that gives you a quick recap of who sent the mail, the date and time it was sent, and the information from the subject field. Down here is the same information, but from the mail itself. It's like the return address. Now what Vince went ahead and did was reply to my message instead of starting a whole new one. See? Here's my message to him, and that's a shortcut I'll show you in just a second. Let's see, what did he say? Tim, hello there, guy. Hope everything is going well. I just got your mail about a minute ago, and here's your instant reply. Also, here's the graphic you asked for. You might want to share it with Martin. Cool. Now, check out the file that Vince sent. It was actually deposited right onto my desktop. We'll just double-click it, and there it is. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and reply to Vince's message. I'll go back to my inbox come back down to Vince's original message, and then I'll go up to the message menu and select reply. Doing that opens up the original message. Here's my message to Vince up here at the top, and down here is his reply to me. Notice that these lines have little arrows called carrots to indicate that they're from previous correspondence. Okay, I'll come down here below them, and I'll just say, Thanks, Vince. I think everyone's starting to get the hang of email now. And I'll go ahead and forward this to Martin. I'll put my name down at the bottom. Now, the cool part about replying is that the program automatically inserts Vince's address into the to field and it inserts my address into the from field. Also, it's handy to have all of the preceding correspondence to refer to, especially if you're discussing a project back and forth with someone. So that's it. I'll go ahead and click on send, and it's on its way back to Vince, even as we speak. Now, I promised that I would forward that graphic to Martin. So I'll go back to my inbox, highlight Vince's original message, and then I'll go up to the message menu, and select the item labeled Forward. This is really great if you want to share information with a friend. All you have to do is type in the address of the person you want to forward this message to. In this case, it's martin at success.net. You can add to the bottom of the message if you want to, but now I want to go ahead and attach that graphic to it. To do that, I'll go back up to the message menu, select Attach Document, then, here's the graphic. I'll click on it once with my mouse, and then click on Open. And here it is, attached to the email. Then all you do is click on Send, and both the message and the graphic are on their way. As you quickly discover, email is easy, it's really fast, and it can really be a lot of fun. In your classroom, you can get involved with any number of exciting projects that involve contacting and working with other students, teachers, even experts from all over the world, all using email. Before long, you'll have made a lot of new friends. Oh, that's the cool thing about email. Hold on a second. Hello? Yeah, look, I'm a little busy right now. What's up? Do I have a what? A stamp? Look, we don't use those anymore. It, does he have an email address? Look, uh, hold on a second. Uh, sorry, I really have to straighten this out. I'll see you on the internet. Look, I really can't believe you were going to mail that. Okay, look. Get on your computer. Yeah, yeah. Find that Eudora icon. Click on it. Okay, great.